As the search continues for a Lexington native and her husband missing since the Brussels attacks, their families say they're becoming more frustrated over the lack of information. It wasn't home sweet home for the UK women's basketball team tonight, a disappointing end to their season. Thousands of UK fans packed Rupp Arena for tonight's game and they say they have a lot to be proud of. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you on this Friday. It is a chilly start to our Easter weekend, but it looks like warmer air will be moving in tomorrow. And one of the questions you may have, will the rain hold off through Easter? We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. He has all the answers in your <laughs> no wait weather forecast. Yeah, I will Chris. claim to have the answers even if we don't, guys. Uh, we go into Easter Sunday. Most of the shower and thunderstorm action holds off until late in the day into the evening. Short term, we mentioned how conditions are going to get warmer. Well, it's going to get warmer tomorrow. Tonight, it's all about the cold frost advisory out for the entire region. Freezing temperatures possible in the parts of northern Kentucky. 34 the cold spot, Frankfurt 37 right now, Lexington. This is the area that already has the clear skies. Look at the 30s. Look at where it matches up with the clouds versus the stars that are showing. Clouds across southern and eastern Kentucky, keeping those temperatures into the low 40s. But overall, it's a better wind that is going to blow into town as we go through the day tomorrow. Temperatures with a touch of frost in the morning around 30 tomorrow afternoon. Mid to upper 60s, mostly sunny skies that will be showing up across the entire region. Milder air for the weekend. Line of thunderstorms coming in later Eastern. Guys, big changes with your seven day forecast coming up in a few. Police in Belgium have arrested more people as they continue their search for suspects in the Brussels terrorist attacks. Three arrests came in the same neighborhood where police found bomb making equipment and explosives. In one case, police shot a man in the leg who was carrying a suspicious package. Police are still searching for a man they say left a suitcase bomb behind at the Brussels airport on Tuesday. Belgium's last official day of mourning ended Friday, but while people in the country are trying to get back to normal, there's still a lot of concern about the potential for more attacks. Tonight, a Lexington native and her husband are still missing three days after the attacks, and family members say the wait for answers is becoming more frustrating. Garrett Weimer is at the live desk with our top story. Garrett? Amber, still so many questions as another day draws to a close, yet another day without any answers. In fact, for the families of Justin and Stephanie Schultz, they say the wait is not getting any easier and folks' frustrations are beginning to show. Stephanie's and Justin's parents are now in Brussels, joining other families whose loved ones are missing. Betty Newsom, Stephanie's aunt, says her sister Carolyn Moore is tired and frustrated. They say they're getting little help from the Belgian government, but they hope that will soon change. Secretary of State John Kerry placed a wreath at a memorial outside the Brussels airport, expressing his sympathy for the victims of Tuesday's attacks. The United States, I want you to know, is praying and grieving with you for the loved ones of those who have been very cruelly taken from us, including Americans, and for the many who were injured in these despicable attacks. Newsom says they hope Kerry's visit to Brussels will encourage the Belgian government to work with U.S. officials to help them get answers. But as days pass with still no word, others are getting frustrated as well. Newsom says her sister told her that at the last update for families of the missing, Several folks had to be restrained as their emotions boiled over. Now, Newsom says families of the missing are getting one update a day in Brussels. Their next one will be tomorrow afternoon. Until then, just more torturous waiting. At the live desk, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. Newsom tells us that her son, who has military experience, is considering going to Brussels to help with the search. Tonight, a former secretary of Kentucky's personnel cabinet faces a federal bribery charge. Timothy Longmire was most recently the state's deputy attorney general until he resigned this week. Federal investigators say while personnel cabinet secretary, he took more than $200,000 in kickbacks from a private consulting company. They say the payments were made during meetings outside two businesses in Woodford County. 
The first two NCAA tournament games were a breeze for the UK women's basketball team, but tonight's Sweet 16 game against Washington at Rupp Arena had a much different outcome for the Cats. Brian Milam joins us now with more on the game. Not the way we wanted it to end, Brian. No, not at all. It appeared the stars were aligned for the UK women to make a real push to the Final Four, but Washington had other ideas. Kentucky in a real dogfight early, and they knew it. Janae Thompson hits this jumper to make it 11 to 10. That was UK's last lead of the game. The Cats had no answer for Chantel Osohor. A big girl at a big spin move. UW leads by seven. What a game she had. Trailing by six. Epps with the three pointer. Epps with 30. But the Huskies answer. Talia Walton drives baseline, hits the floater. She had 30. Matthew Mitchell is livid. UK would trail 35 30 at the half. In the third, Washington leads by a dozen. Epps with the drive and the tough runner. It's 51 41. Final play of the third. Osohor hits the three. The set shot. Bottoms up and in a stunner. Washington does it again. They upset Maryland last week and they end Kentucky season today 85 72. It was a frustrating night for Kentucky from the opening tip. The Cats struggled on defense, and then a poor shooting night really cost them in this game. Washington only had one more field goal than the Cats, but 11 of them were threes. We got the ball at the rim just countless times. And we needed to turn around there and, and, and make a, a two or three footer uh, with somebody, you know, standing between us and the basket. But we were able to elevate up, um, and they only, you know, they only blocked four shots. It wasn't like they were blocking shots. Maybe we were really amped up to play, and we were rushing a little bit. But at the end of the day, we got to play defense. That's our identity. Um, that's where we start our. Everything is on the defensive end, and a lot of times that creates half of our offense. The season ended sooner than they wanted, but even in disappointment, Matthew Mitchell said coaching this group has been one of the best experiences of his career. In Lexington, Christy Thomas, WKYT. Thank you, Christy. Not many saw this as the season finale for UK, at least not tonight, but Cinderella is alive and well in the form of the Washington Huskies. We'll have more later in sports. All right, we'll see you then, Brian. Thank you. And despite the loss, UK fans say they still have a lot to be proud of this season. Thousands of them showed up at Rupp Arena tonight to cheer on their cats. Monique Blair continues our team coverage. The game was close at times, but the Wildcats will not be moving on. Even so, the team had an arena full of people cheering them on. Many of those fans even coming out two hours before this game to root on their team. <laughs> The scene kind of looked like what you may expect if the UK women's Wildcats were playing an away game. As team members made their way down the hotel escalator. They're a good team. Star player Michaela Epps walking down by herself, followed not long after by coach Matthew Mitchell. Each greeted by dozens of enthusiastic fans as they watched the team board the bus. But that bus wasn't going very far, just a few feet actually, to Rupp Arena for their sixth all time appearance in the Sweet 16. I followed them all these years through the tournament, and the fact that they've made it this far, it's a huge accomplishment. And although the Cats will not be moving on, fans tell me they're still proud of how far they came this season. There, there's always a next year. You just build to the next year. You, you try to better yourself every year as you go on. That's what we've done in the whole tradition of UK basketball. Although the UK women's basketball team has made it to an elite eight, the team has never made it to an NCAA final four in school history. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. And you may be wondering why they're in a hotel. Coach Mitchell said the Cats stayed in a hotel off campus since the beginning of the tournament as a way to get rid of any distractions. Plans to build a new bluegrass stockyards have taken a big step forward, but some people still aren't happy with the location. That's coming up. And then we're learning more about how recovery crews plan to pull a car out of the Ohio River more than a week after it plunged off a bridge. While the governor's proposed budget would allow the state to spend millions to bring in new attorneys, hundreds of court workers could lose their jobs under proposed cuts. Concerns in Kentucky courts. Monday at 6 on WKYT. 
Kentucky mornings start here. Breaking and overnight news, weather to plan your day, plus traffic you can take with you. Make WKYT this morning part of your Kentucky morning. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7 on WKYT. Rooms come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. With eight times more fragrance control, the new Airwick scented oil warmer lets you dial up or down for the perfect amount of fragrance, no matter the size of the room. Airwick, home is in the air. Lexington Overstock Warehouse is open this weekend for our big weekend warehouse sale. Get quality furniture and mattresses at incredibly low prices. All wood queen storage bed, $397. Serta queen mattress and box, $277. Go to LexingtonOverstockWarehouse.com for more details. How many power company employees does it take to change 2,500 light bulbs? <laughs> I'm Delinda Borden for Kentucky Power. One of our experts came out and found the theater could save a lot of money just by changing their light bulbs. We're saving nearly 87% on our electric bill compared to the old incandescents. By helping the Paramount to save money, we help them to stay viable in the future. I'll never perform on stage. I'm just proud to be part of the supporting cast. We may be a power company, but the true power in our communities comes from our people. Tell me another way people say mother. Mommy. Sheila. Mommy. Oh, mommy. You want mommy. Y'all crazy. Family Feud, one full hour starting at 7 on the CW Lexington. Let's get these Dayquil liquid gels and go. But these liquid gels are new. Mucinex Fast Max. It's the same difference. This one is max strength and fights mucus. Mucinex Fast Max, the only branded cold and flu liquid gel that's max strength and fights mucus. Let's end this. Stay connected to the news that matters to you. Follow WKYT on Twitter. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Well, we've made it to our Easter weekend. It's a chilly start to that weekend out there this evening. After a colder than normal day by roughly 15 to 20 degrees tonight, we're setting the stage for a little frost out there. Current temperatures already into the upper 30s into much of the area. 34, though, the cold spot into Frankfurt. Chances are, if you're out in the open countryside right now into central Kentucky, you're already seeing some of those back ports thermometers into the low 30s. 36 Maysville. 40s across southern and southeastern Kentucky. Those are areas still getting in on a little bit of cloud cover. So we've cleaned the skies up, bluegrass region, allowing those temperatures to drop. Give it another hour or two, and a lot of those clouds in the southeastern Kentucky will begin to go by the wayside, allowing your thermometers to drop as well. So green thumbs, take the precautions right now with a lot of the buds, the blooms out way earlier than normal this year. Southerly flow will kick in as we go into the weekend, so better weather is going to blow into town for your Saturday. Coming at us from the Mississippi Valley, that new hour-by-hour -hour forecast is in. We'll start you out at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Most areas are low 30s. I could see a few upper 20s coming in to central and eastern Kentucky to begin the day. Tomorrow afternoon, we just flip the script in a hurry. Temperatures will hit the mid to the upper 60s, 70, maybe southern Kentucky. It's a possibility. Tomorrow evening, nice evening to be out on the town. And your Sunday forecast with temperatures to start things out, upper 40s to low 50s. Sunday's forecast is a warm one. Most areas should hit 70 to 75 degrees. I could see some mid-70s showing up for areas that get enough sunshine. Clouds will increase, and look what happens. The deeper we get into the afternoon toward the evening, some showers and thunderstorms will come on into town. A few of those will be left over into Monday morning, at least with a shower chance into parts of southeastern Kentucky. For the rest of the region, starting out your Monday, those temperatures will be right around the 40-degree mark. And by then, it's a northwesterly wind that is flowing across the Commonwealth. That will mean a chillier day on Monday compared to what we have this weekend. Don't think it's going to be as cold as what we had today, but readings will likely stay into the 50s. It's one of those days, keep the clouds around, you're going to be closer to the low 50s. Keep a little sun around 55 to 60. That will be followed by a better period of weather coming up for the middle of next week. Let's break down that Easter Sunday forecast in greater detail. Sunrise services, 50. A yeah, Easter egg hunts, middle of the day, 70 degrees. Low and mid 70s possible if the storms hold off. And right now, most of the daylight hours on Sunday should be storm free. Late in the day, toward the evening, we have the risk for a strong thunderstorm working in from southwest to northeast. That'll set the stage for that chillier day on Monday. Look what happens Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures bounce back toward 70 degrees, and another cold front moves into town 
as we go into next Thursday and Friday. That'll have some very cold air to start out the month of April. Short term really looks good as we go into our Saturday and Sunday. You've made many people happy about Easter. Mm -hmm. Let's get through it. Let's make sure it happens. First, <laughs> right? Don't jinx me just yet. <laughs> I've been hammering away on that. I don't, I know, mean, right? to, I don't mean to put too much but pressure on it. You're right, but we've moved that rain chance mm -hmm. deeper into the day. We could hit 75 if the wow. rains don't arrive until the evening. That's awesome. Good. Thanks. Gusty winds delayed it by a day, but a Madison County church opened its outdoor Easter program on Friday night. That is coming up. You know, Kentucky weather is what it is. For those of us who've lived here our entire lives, we've just accepted the fact that we're never going to be able to control it. I remember growing up in Sayersville and wondering, what is it about Kentucky that makes our weather so ridiculous? And that passion to understand it has led me to where I am today. While I still can't control it, I sure as heck really understand it. I'm WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey, and I stand for Kentucky. Word, don't lie. Tenacious. Who do you think you are? Bold. You want to try and tell us the truth now? Decisive. You can't do that. Hot bench. Now you're pleading ignorance. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm is right. You. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> In this courtroom, there's three sides to every verdict. It's true. <laughs> Hot bench. Weekdays at four on the CW Lexington. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. The Urban County Board of Adjustment has voted to allow the Bluegrass Stockyards to move forward with plans to relocate the business. Back in January, a massive fire destroyed the stockyards on Lyle Industrial Avenue. Stockyard owners want to build a new facility off Ironworks Pike at the Fayette Scott County line. But some people in that area are worried that the stockyards could affect air and water quality there. You can put a lot of lipstick on a pig, and it's still going to be a pig. We're going to have a lot of noise. We're going to have a lot of dust. Obviously, a lot of people are still marred in, you know, 50-year-old history. And, and that's a difficult thing to move beyond, but, and we understand that, so we're just, we're just trying to be factual. Stockyard leaders say the developed parts of the property will not be on Georgetown's water supply. In the morning, crews will once again try to bring a car to the surface more than a week after it plunged into the Ohio River. Campbell County police say the car was knocked off the I-275 bridge between Campbell County and Cincinnati during a crash. They think that one person was inside the car. River conditions have been too dangerous to recover the vehicle. Crews will begin uh, bringing a barge to a, with a crane to it to that area, hoping to pull the car out of the water. The river will be closed in that area starting in the morning until the recovery operation is finally finished. He nearly died in an ATV crash two years ago, but a Laurel County teenager and his family is thanking the community for their support by paying it forward. Casey Collette and his family brought meals to people at Lexington's Catholic Action Center. Casey spent months in the hospital and has had many surgeries, but his family says they still have a lot to be thankful for. Well, I've had so much came to me. I figured we could give stuff. Some stuff back. The family also donated several boxes of food to the Catholic Action Center. A Madison County church opened its drive through Easter event tonight, a day later than expected. Strong winds yesterday afternoon destroyed some of the set pieces put up for display at Church on the Rock near Berea. The church quickly worked to rebuild the damaged pieces. 
Senior Pastor Mark Sarvers was pleased with Friday's turnout for Journey to the Cross. The parking lot will park 500 cars. We can get 200 cars in line, way to go through it. So if our parking lot was bigger, we could get more cars through. But as you can see, the, the response is phenomenal. And the event will continue through tomorrow night at the church. They didn't give up, did they? No, they didn't. Yeah. Right there. All right, Brian Milam is up next with a look ahead at sports. Yeah, it was a tough day for the Wildcats baseball team, and as you know, the UK ladies. When we come back, highlights of the season finale a lot earlier than expected of UK's basketball season. Have something that needs investigating? Email us or call the WKYT Investigates tip line. Introducing new KY Touch Gel Creme for massage and intimacy. Every touch gently intensified. A little touch is all it takes. KY Touch. He was sneaky. But that ain't the worst, Doc. If I catch you fishing here again, and use you for bait. Do you ever do anything that you wondered if you was doing the right thing? It's just plain extortion's what it is. Good jab, jab, and chop, and smack. <laughs> well, why do you suppose he did that? Hmm. Might a good question, ain't he? What if I say I won't give you a knuckle? A knuckle sandwich. Opie, son, you all right? Ain't it a bean? <laughs> the Andy Griffith Show, Saturdays at 8 on the CW Lexington. Hey, where'd they go? We're not coming back. Two years, stranded in 1958. We're free for retired. What the hell is going on? We're not leaving our team. We'll die trying. Ah! Sorry, we're late. DC's Legends of Tomorrow returns Thursday at 8, 7 central on The CW. It's time to wake up. You've got things to do. Mouths to feed, work to get done. It's another Kentucky morning. And Kentucky mornings start here. Good morning, I'm Bill O'Brien. And I'm Rebecca Smith. You don't have time to waste, so we don't waste your time. Simple as that. Breaking and overnight news, weather to plan your day, plus traffic you can take with you. Make WKYT this morning part of your Kentucky morning. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7 on WKYT. Saturday's Powerball drawing is $101 million. The Kentucky women have never been to the Final Four, but with two games in Lexington at Rupp, it looked like a possible clear path for the third-seeded Wildcats. But the seventh-seeded Washington Huskies had some other ideas. Michaela Epps battling through a shoulder injury gets the first buck into the game. UK up 3-0. Now down one, Janae Thompson works her way in for the mid-range jumper. The Cats lead 11-10. Thompson with 11. Now down six. Epps again, this time for three. 21-18. UK would play the rest of the way from behind. 6-2 Chantel Osahor pops the set shot three. The Huskies by six. To Leah Walton, well, she was amazing. The drive along the baseline, she had 30. The lead is 11, and Matthew Mitchell not very happy. More from Osahor. The spin move. Look at the move. She's got 19 points, 17 rebounds. Now trailing by eight, UK cuts into the lead. The pass is deflected. Alexis Jennings scores, and it's fouled. Kentucky down 35-30 at the half, third quarter. Kentucky trails by seven. Macy Morris spots up, hits the three. She had seven points, but the Huskies would grow the lead to 12. Epps, tough shot. Two of her team high 30. UK still down by 10. Washington's All-American Kelsey Plum counters the southpaw, nails the jumper. She had 23. It's a 15-point hole. Kentucky looking for a spark. Jennings slams into Osafor for the basket. Look at the shot she takes. Delivers it. But Osafor would not be phased into the third. She's just waiting for it. And the set shot is back in fashion. And so are the upsets in March Madness. UK 
loses 85-72. Christy Thomas has more from Rupp Arena. Washington's Cinderella run continues as the seven-seeded Huskies pulled off yet another upset. It was a poor shooting night for Kentucky and a very slow start offensively, but Kentucky's defense that had been so good for them in the second half of the season really let them down tonight. They struggled with containment the entire ball game. Kentucky had no answer for Walton and Osahor. You know, I thought Walton, uh, that, that baseline back down and fall away jumper, that, those were tough shots. The, the ones I was disappointed in were just, we, we, we were uncharacteristically um, out of position defensively tonight, and they took advantage of it. Janae and Taylor did a tremendous job on Plum. You know, she took some very tough shots, missed some shots, so hats off to them, too, for that. But I think, um, you know, a lot of us just got so caught up, focused on her, that um, we let the other players, especially Zone 3, have tremendous night. After the game, a visibly emotional Michaela Epps said that the worst part about this loss was the fact that they'll lose Janae Thompson. The Wildcats' lone senior finished tonight with 11 points and five assists in her final game as a Wildcat. In Lexington, Christy Thomas, WKYT. Thank you very much, Christy. In other news, Texas A&M associate head coach Rick Stansberry expected to be named the new head coach at Western Kentucky, according to multiple reports. Stansberry, the Meade County, Kentucky native, previous, previously spent 14 seasons as the head coach at Mississippi State before retiring in 2012. A news conference is scheduled in Bowling Green for Monday afternoon. Stansberry would take over for Ray Harper, who resigned earlier this month. As I mentioned, that official announcement should come sometime Monday. Day. UK baseball hosting number one ranked Florida tonight in game one of a three game set. No score in the second. Two men on for freshman Tristan Pompey straight out of Canada and the Mountie delivers. The rookie gets the base hit to right. Zach Rex comes around from second, slides in. That's one nothing UK in the third Florida freshman Nelson Maldonado takes a high fastball from Zach Brown and drives it to deep right. And just like that, we have a tie game 1 1 top of the fourth now 3 1 Gators. It's Maldonado again. He said like candy Maldonado in the 89 postseason hangs the hurt the curveball and it's gone again over the short porch. It's 5 to 1 Florida. The lead grows to 7 to 1 bases loaded for UK's Gunner McNeil. The Juco transfer keeps his 16 game hitting streak alive. Base knocked to left Storm Wilson Evan White come on down to score. But Florida would open it up with five runs in the ninth and they take game one. 12 to 5 game two tomorrow at 2 o'clock and then Sunday the season the uh, series finale at 1 o'clock on Easter Sunday at sports. We'll be right back. So what's going on possible flu outbreak. I've seen smallpox scares SARS panic West Nile. I've never seen anything like this virus before. This is now a matter of national security replacing city under complete quarantine. I don't know how this world works in here. You can make it better down. We drew a line through the city, tore families apart. But do we really know what's going on? They're deliberately hiding the truth from people. They lied about it being bioterrorism. They sure as hell are lying when they say everything's okay in here. I can't let you through there. My girl is in there. So is mine. Begins Tuesday, April 19th on the CW. <laughs> Meredith and her crew are having some serious fun. Yeah. Oh, geez! Woo! What is going on here? It's always unexpected. We never know, right? You are good. And totally <laughs> unpredictable. It's only vodka. You gotta spill the beans. <laughs> yes, Meredith. <laughs> the Meredith Vieira Show. This is really good. I'm feeling at home here. Every weekday, weekdays at 2 on the CW Lexington. Every morning is an eye-opening morning on CBS This Morning. Start with responsible, intelligent information and conversation. Take me back to that moment that we just saw in this confrontation. Searchers race to save people trapped for days in Colorado. In an interview you'll see only on CBS This Morning. Start with world-class original reporting. Start thinking. CBS This Morning.
right. It is Easter week, and so many people have plans. Yeah. Typically, some of them outside. We, that's right. Nice. Most of them outside. And we look good for Saturday and into most of Easter Sunday. 66 tomorrow. Yes, it's cold in the morning. Give it a little while. It warms up quickly into the afternoon. We'll push the low 70s Sunday. A lot of those storms will hold off until we get into Sunday evening. Sounds like Coach Mitchell was very pleased with the crowd that showed up, at least to try to support him. Yeah, it was. It was a tough way to end the season on your home court in front of such a good crowd. But, you know, only lose one player, so the future does look good. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, and I have a great weekend.